All right. It is four o'clock, and I will call the Plan Commission meeting to order. Uh, I'll call the roll. Alder Ballinger? Here. Uh, Kevin Jump? Here. Marilyn? Here. Uh, Braden? Here. All right. If folks could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, I see that everybody is here uh, to hear a presentation on the comprehensive plan for number 11, so I appreciate that. Um, okay, tough crowd tonight. Uh, uh, so this, this is how we'll kind of run the show. So uh, we'll go through the agenda. Uh, we'll take each item. Uh, the staff will give the report. The uh, uh, applicant will give the report. And if anyone is wishing to speak, um, you can come up to the podium. You get three minutes. State your, your name, your address. Um, this isn't a Q&A session, so this is just you providing your feedback and input on the, the item that is on the agenda. And then uh, the commission will deliberate and then vote on that item. So, all right, with that, first item is the minutes from our last meeting. Is there a mo motion to approve the minutes from our June 25th meeting? Is there a second? Moved and seconded. All those in favor of approving the minutes, state aye. Aye. Any objection? Minutes are approved. Next is site plan review. Application uh, for site plan review by Gerald uh, Piat, uh, if I'm saying that right, to operate a natu natural gas regulation station located at 608 South Commerce Street. Staff report, Elise. The Wisconsin Public Service is proposing to construct and operate a natural gas regulation station. Um, the proposed structure is a 14 by 20 by 8 fabricated utility building, and the new structure will replace obsolete utility vaults located in the sidewalks of South Penn Street and Indiana Avenue. Thank you. Is there anyone here for this item? Is the applicant here? Yep. Any additional comments that you guys have to add? Okay. Question, questions from commission members? Motions from commission members? Move to approve, subject to staff recommendations. Second. Moved and seconded. Seeing no more discussion, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, that is approved. I think we got a question. Oh, sure. Yeah, if you could, just so we can hear it. Scott Shepard, I'm with uh, WPS. I do local and governmental affairs for WPS's Northeast Territory. All I would like to request of staff is when they're doing the site plan review and making recommendations, we like to keep the uh, CPTED, which is Community Policing Through Environmental Design Standards in mind, which uh, police and fire have kind of counseled us on, which is keeping tall bushes, trees, and all that out of the way so that when they do their drive-bys and, and do their policing and fire work, they can put spotlights in and see see what's happening inside rather than blocking it off to the view. Okay, so that, that standard is, I guess, I'd like to see if that could be applied in your recommendations. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, next is application for site plan review by Heidi Luce to operate an adult family home located at 2735 North 31st Street. Elise? The property is currently used as a single family home. The proposed use is a state licensed three to four bed adult family home for developmentally disabled and senior populations. There will only be one to two employees here maximum. All right, thank you. Is the applicant in the room for this one? Any additional comments to add? No. No, all right. Anyone on the, from the public uh, for this item? All right, comments, motions from commission members. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this? All right. Marilyn, do you? Have? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you for doing it. All right. Thank you. All right. All those in favor of approval, state aye. Aye. Any objections? All right. That item is approved. Next is application for conditional use permit with exceptions by Camp Evergreen to construct an additional Camp Evergreen facility located at 2776 North 31st Street. Police? Camp Evergreen built the existing facility in 1989. The outdoor pool was added and since modified in 2016 to provide full accessibility. The proposed project is to an add an addition to the existing facility that will enclose the existing outdoor pool. 
thus creating an indoor pool that the camp can use year round. All right. Anything else? Except this would be a great summer to have it enclosed. <laughs> Sounds it's good. It's operating eventually. Yeah. All right. Uh, questions or motions from commission members? Move to approve, subject to staff recommendations. Second. Moved and seconded. Final thoughts? Seeing none, all those in favor, state aye. 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 All right, that item is approved. All right, item eight and nine, we'll take together for the staff report, Elise. Malibu Apartments is a nautical looking building fitting the larger community appeal with an interior parking structure that is wrapped with apartments, lobby spaces, and community areas along South 7th Street. Um, the project also includes the potential for waterfront commercial restaurant space at the end of Clare Avenue. This is a privately owned contaminated site. This was previously a boundary. Um, this, the general development plan differs from the specific implementation plan only in that the general development plan includes the potential for a second building to the north. The specific implementation plan is the one original um, U-shaped building. All right, sounds good. Is the applicant additional comments? Okay. Okay. You wanna... Yeah. All right. Does the applicant have any additional comments to add? If you want to come up to the mic. I'm Jake Boswell of Malibu Apartments LLC. Um, thank you, Elise, for giving the uh, general development plan uh, synopsis there. Um, so the GDP consists of 210 units total, um, which is what we're uh, on the agenda item for today uh, on the Kite Beach site. It is an open brownfield site, uh, as you mentioned, and we are working hand in hand with the, the DNR, the county, and the city to remediate the contamination and uh, get it capped and, uh, and eventually DNR closure on the site. Um, the whole uh, plan is obviously to bring more uh, residents of the area to the waterfront and to take advantage of the natural amenities of the lakeshore. Um, so I really appreciate um, uh, your approval of the GDP today so we can continue to move forward with, with the process here. And I guess I did kind of just come for any questions as well. Okay. So, Questions from commissioners for the applicant? All right, anyone from the neighborhood wishing to speak on this item? Laura, if you want to come on up. Then just state your name and address in enough three minutes. Laura Higgin, 417 New York Avenue, uh, homeowner in the Ellis District, um, resident of number 21 Tax Incremental District and also a member of the Mayor's Sustainability Committee. In retrospect, can you I move the mic down? Oh, can you, you can hear go. me? That's better. Okay, did everyone else hear what I said? Okay. Um, in retrospect, I don't know what we as a city, as the residents thought was gonna happen because it's been many years now since that block has been raised and houses have been bought and raised, but. I guess back then, we weren't really thinking about really big apartment buildings. So we, didn't, we weren't concerned. Now that the city has built and is in the process of building huge apartment buildings, some right up to the sidewalk, we are having concerns about how close to the water it's gonna be, what they're gonna have to do to build on the beach or back from the beach to stop erosion or wave activity and whether the beach will still be usable. Our other concerns are that it's a lot in a very small area. We worry about water runoff. We worry about um, just everything that comes with a lot of pavement and a lot of building. We're wondering if uh, there's gonna be any kind of green energy used because I don't think there has been in any of the other buildings that are being built um, or have been built. We're wondering if um, there could be permeable asphalt or permeable surfaces so that the water won't just sit there and then run off into the lake. 
We're wondering if there could be some kind of retention pond that could maybe be a water garden. Um, if it has to be built, which many of us are against because it's so big, and I understand that there's codes that say that it has to be big. I don't know because I started wading through the codes and, and I never got to it. But if there is a zoning code that says there has to be a minimum to build an apartment building, I, I really think that should be taken back and reviewed and revised. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? John? John Dolson, Foreign Eye, New York, Sheboygan. Um, years ago, I was on the um, Architecture Review Board, and there was a rendition, a proposal for that site back then uh, when I was working at Steuben Arc Architects, and it was more scalable to the neighborhood. It was much smaller. Uh, the size that's being attempted to go there now, it's just not practical for, this, for that neighborhood. It's 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag, and it's not proper for the neighborhood that it's going into. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Megan Bratberg, 703 Dillingham. And I wonder, since we couldn't really hear what was being said up here, I wonder if you could just clarify what it is you're voting on today. What, what is the subject at hand? Yeah, so this is the Malibu apartments. Oh, right, but is, it's not everything about the Malibu. You, you mentioned a specific, is it their entire plan? I mean, it's, what is it? It's their entire plan. We're looking at the general development plan and, G the, G okay. yep, and the specific implementation plan. So the ge general development plan is the overall plan. There's two phases. So the general development plan is looking at both those phases and the specific implementation plan is looking at phase number one. Okay, and that has been made public probably in previous meetings or somewhere. Uh, the neighborhood can see what that development plan is, I guess. It's yep. part of, yeah. It's all on, all on the website right okay, now. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yep. Hi, I'm Heidi Lees. I live at 634 Dillingham. And I just want to concur that I think the development is too large for the neighborhood and it doesn't fit in with the neighborhood very well. But one of my main concerns is the amount of cars in a very small area and what's going to happen with the parking. Um, when we met at the neighborhood meeting with the mayor a couple months ago, we talked about, he talked about a traffic study. So that is one of my big concerns living in the area, the safety of kids. There's a lot of recreation in the area with biking and I'm just really concerned and a lot of us are really concerned about the, the amount of cars that will be brought into that particular area. Thank you. Paul Hankins, uh, 1407 South 7th, and my uh, question kind of goes along with that one, but from the other side. And I was just looking through the, uh, through the packet of information, and I noticed it, and I think this is a trend, but uh, Jake, I think that the, it says that that kind of the standard for parking now for apartment units is kind of a 1.1 cars per unit in urban, in urban areas. And so I don't know if that's if that's a standard that's gonna be used here. Well, 1.4, okay. Well, then I've, I've got a fourth of a car that I can, 40%. Uh, but that's interesting. So there will be, there'd be fewer cars than there would be if they were, you know, two car families, but that would still be a, a great number of cars. So that's good. Thank you for the clarification. My name is Jim Van Akron. I live at 432 Lincoln Avenue in Sheboygan. I encourage you not to approve the develop, development plan and, and implementation plan for the Malibu apartments in the form that is presently before you. As some of you know, I'm the chairperson of the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. However, I do not speak to you today as a representative of the task force. One of my major concerns for the project is a sustainability concern. Sustainability is often viewed in three parts, economic sustainability, environmental sustainability, and social cultural sustainability. It has been compared to a three-legged stool. Overemphasis on one leg leads to a sustainability imbalance. This proposal overemphasizes the economic aspect 
of sustainability at the expense of social cultural sustainability. Specifically, the buildings, there's two buildings, are inappropriate for the neighborhood. This is a neighborhood of primarily single family and two family homes. My family has lived in this neighborhood for over 80 years. Our length of time there does not mean we have any special privilege, but it does mean we understand the social makeup of the neighborhood. We know many of our neighbors, many who also have lived in the same home for generations. A building such as this is inconsistent with the neighborhood culture. I don't mean to say nothing should be built on the property. Two-story townhomes like those found at Portscape near Blue Harbor would be appropriate. In fact, the Malibu apartments would be appropriate in the empty lot next to Blue Harbor and Portscape. Another major concern is the parking on the west side of the building. 7th Street is a major bicycle route in the city for both recreational bikers and commuters. Adding multiple right angle parking spots makes this a much more dangerous route for bicyclists. Given the city's commitment to complete streets and making roadways safe for all transportation, this development as proposed is inconsistent with that commitment. A major issue is Lake Michigan. While it is an attraction for those who live here, its water levels rise and fall as and has in the past and will in the future threaten the building and infrastructure at this site. I have lived, this as, lived in this area and know the water level has risen to the height of where the eastern area of the building is proposed to be sited. The water level also has risen to the area where the cul-de-sacs are proposed to be located on Clara and George Avenue and where the asphalt pavement is proposed on the east end of the building. Revetments, a wall, rock, or concrete rubble would be needed to protect these investments by both the city and the developer. This type of protection would also restrict public access to the beach during periods of high water. In recent years, we saw this same type of problem along the concrete walkway at Blue Harbor when the water level was high. With climate change occurring, we have an increased chance of high water. As a city dependent on tourist trade, we also want our city to be visually appealing to tourists. This is a concept in urban planning called, there is a concept in urban planning called terminating <clears throat> vistas. Your eye follows a visual line to a point where something terminates. An example is when you stand at 8th and New York Avenue and look east, your eye terminates at the pleasing site of the facade of St. Clement's Church. Our beaches have the pleasing view. If you look south from Blue Harbor, you have a nice view to the bluff along Lakeshore Drive. If you look north from Lakeshore Drive Bluff, you have a nice view of the beach, lake, and harbor. A, a five-story apartment is a wart in this vista. Finally, considering the precedent, you are, consider the precedent you are setting by approving a building of this size on this site. Surely, if you approve this, a similar building could be justified for the Memorial Hospital site. I know there are many people who don't want to see that happen, and people in authority who have promised it won't happen. You should approve a plan consistent with the nature of the neighborhood, taking into account historic Lake Michigan water levels and the need to keep our beach views attractive. This is not an appropriate plan for this location. Anyone else? I'm Scott Hansen, uh, 611 Alabama Avenue. I'm, I'm bringing up a point that came up a few years ago. Two to three years ago, there was we were informed that there is a sewer system south of approximately Indiana to the wastewater treatment plant that is severely deteriorated or in a position that it needs to be repaired for fear of a catastrophic failure. Uh, we've had low water, historical low water, for three years now, and yet there's no work has been started there. I don't know if the work is something that the city has to do or it's state regulations or whatever, but nonetheless, no work has been done on that sewer system. That sewer system runs between the existing grass levels and the beach itself, or the water itself. Uh, and the, some of the work was to, was to be uh, roads down below the bluffs uh, between uh, Clara and, uh, or the King Park and the wastewater treatment plant. My concern is, with the addition of 200 plus residents, this will certainly contribute to a larger sewage collection system in this area. Can the existing deteriorated sewer system handle such an increase? If it were to fail, how would it impact those upstream or downstream? That's my question. 
Anyone else? Going once. Last call. All right. I'll bring it to the commission members. Um, I know that uh, there was a few points that were brought up, so I want to just ask uh, Assistant City Engineer Kevin Jump. Uh, parking and traffic were mentioned in a parking study were mentioned. Kevin, do you want to just kind of hit on, hit on some of those points? So traffic, anytime there's a development, traffic's always a concern. Um, we don't have any immediate plans to change anything with the traffic, um, but we will, we will be monitoring any traffic impacts that we see from, you know, increased residents in that area. All right. You want to give an update too on the sewer project? Yes. Um, so we're waiting for FEMA funding in order to start that project. Um, the sewers, I believe the sewers from here, this particular property would flow up to the Kentucky lift station and then flow back into that interceptor that you were talking about. Yes. All right. Other questions from commission members? John? What's the timing of the FEMA funding? That's a good question. We have, we are back and forth with FEMA. We're waiting for them to respond to our last round of comments. Any other commission members, motions, comments, ideas, Braden? I have a few questions, yep. Uh, so my first would be to uh, you, Jake. The question is just about the erosion control. What specifically, I'm not an engineer, so help me understand in layman's terms, what specifically is the plan for erosion control at that site? Erosion. So we have uh, contracted with uh, Stantec, who's also working with the county on the environmental side. So our civil engineers um, have designed a system that was submitted, um, and there is a large um, detention uh, piping system. So all the uh, <clears throat> storm runoff will go into the de detention system, be properly treated, and then released back. So it's definitely something that um, we take serious, and, and, and the state doesn't allow you to create a development that makes the situation worse. So again, I'm not an engineer either, a little over my head technically wise, but uh, in general, generally speaking, um, we have to abide by the city and state guidelines there and the site can't end up worse off than it was to begin with, so. Got it, so detention piping for the rainwater runoff. Any Correct. changes to the shoreline for a potential shoreline erosion with wave action and things like that? No, we're, the building's set back from the, from the beach quite a ways, so the city, actually the city owns the land. I, don't know the exact history of it, but there was a land swap back 10 or plus years ago where the city owns the beach up to our property line, which is kind of where the road is right now, or that abandoned road is anyways, along Clara. So the building sets back from there and we're 80 plus feet back from the ordinary high water mark. Um, so there should be no and during the construction process, obviously, we'll have to uh, put in the silt fence and everything to make sure nothing runs off during the construction phase. So, got it. And then the uh, parking lot, the surface parking lot abutting 7th Street, plan to be standard asphalt, not a permeable surface? Um, good question. I, I, I think as of right now, it was designed as regular asphalt. I don't know if you know that one, Elise. Um, I haven't heard different that it's not um, regular asphalt but that is something we could certainly look into. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts for uh, bicycle parking or storage for residents, given that you'll have less than, than the yep. two or our the zoning code recommended parking minimums? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all of our properties with under or with uh, uh, concealed and closed parking will have uh, parking for, for bicycles, uh, as well as bike uh, repair stations. Um, all of our trash as well, I'm kind of going off a tangent here, but the trash is uh, concealed within that parking structure as well. Um, so there, there'll be a combination of areas um, for bike parking in the sur on the surface by the parking lot as well as within the interior enclosed parking structure. Got it. And then uh, this one, I'm not sure if this will be one that you answered, the one that staff answers. So the, the 7th Street, the... The, the area that this will front on 7th Street today doesn't have a normal sidewalk and curb. It's just paved asphalt to the street. There isn't that kind of differentiation. Is that something that's going to be changed as part of this development? Would there be curb and gutter, uh, terrace area, anything like that changed? I, 
I think that would be, as we finalize the site plans with the developer, we would want that. We would want that to look like a standard road section. And would those site plans, if we give approval to this today, would those site plans come forward for additional approval at any point to here or city council, or that all be sorted out in the details after this approval? I don't know. plan has to come back, right? If it's on the, if it's on this property. Yeah. Right, if it's in a public right-of-way, that would be yeah, internal, separate. but if it's yeah. on mine, any changes on my end would have to come back through, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, got it. All right. Other questions then from commission members? That's not for me. Motions from commission members? Marilyn? Uh, thank you. Considering the report that the city re received about housing and you know, extremely short of housing in Sheboygan, this will be a drop in the bucket, but it will help. So I move to approve. Second. All right. There's been a motion to approve eight and nine. Any final discussion from commission members? Braden? Uh, yeah, so I, uh, I still have some of these concerns and questions. I do want this to go to council so they can have that discussion as well. Um, but I will kind of second what Marilyn's saying here. When we have an opportunity to add housing as infill on existing infrastructure within the city instead of on greenfield development on the edges on infrastructure that has not yet been built, generally I'm going to be one to, to support that. So still have some specific concerns here, but I want this to go to council for further discussion. Thank you. Any more comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any objections? All right, that, those are approved. Next, item 10, general ordinance number 102425 by Older Person Bellinger amending various sections of the Sheboygan Municipal Code so to as correct various errors identified in the current zoning code. Chapter 105. Elise, do you have a staff report? There have just been some errors and inconsistencies noted in our zoning code, some of them stemming from the recodification we had, so we are just correcting some of those inconsistencies and errors that we have found. All right, questions? Braden? So just to clarify, this isn't changing what the actual setbacks are or anything like that. It's just the tables and what was in the verbiage are, are different? Yep. Okay, got it, thanks. Cool. Motions, questions? Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. All right, all those in favor of approving item 10, please state aye. 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 Any objections? All right, that is approved. Next, item 11, comprehensive plan update. Where we are and where are we going? Diane? Thank you, Mayor. So I just wanted to bring this committee um, up to date of where we're at. So at the next um, commission meeting, we will have our kickoff with Bay Lakes Regional Planning Commission, who is been contracted to um, lead this charge with us. And so they will be kind of sharing with you the process, the timeline, the, all of those things. I will say, and they will probably clarify even more at the next meeting on the 23rd when they do the kickoff, that this process is going to be in time intensive, both for staff and, uh, and this committee as leading the process. And so I would anticipate that we're gonna have some longer meetings and we'll try to give you a heads up when we know that that's gonna be the case. I would assume that kickoff conversation next meeting alone will be probably a 30 minute conversation. So just so you know, we are also working to create an internal steering committee um, as well to kind of shepherd this process through. So we really want this to be a robust um, plan that really guides the actions of staff and the city moving forward for the next five to ten years. So um, our goal through this process is to be extremely involved so that we get the implementation, implementation plan that we're looking for to make sure then that truly is our guiding light for how we want to continue to develop the city over the next um, some amount of years at least. It is a breathing, should be a working breathing document. So the, really the goal is, I mean, the statute requires us to update it every 10 years. We're past that already. But, but um, I, I think that our, my plan for this is that it gets evaluated more frequently than that because things change and we want it to truly represent the direction that we're headed at any given time. And so as we do a lot of projects here in the, in the future around housing, right now that's certainly a huge focus that may shift five, seven years from now. And so we want to make sure that this plan is updated as often as we need to, to represent really the goals of not only this body, but council as well. So we'll keep you posted and, and expect though that next meeting will probably be just up for that item alone about 30 minutes. Thanks, Dan. Questions for Diane on comp plan? So 
more for our next meeting. All right. We've exhausted the agenda. Next meeting, July 23rd. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor of adjournment, stay aye. Say aye. Aye. All right. We're adjourned at 4.30. Aye.